Hello and welcome to another delightful video on my channel. For today we're going to be having a look at some of the lesser known DC characters that had the privilege to be made into action figure form in the DC Universe classics. So the first figure I want to cover today is Commandy. Commandy was created by famed comic book artist and legend Jack Kirby and first appeared on August 29th, 1972 in issue number one of Commandy, The Last Boy on Earth. Sadly, the series saw its last issue in 1978, giving it a six-year run. The series chronicled the life and adventures of the young boy Commandy in this post-apocalyptic world that had been ravaged by the Great Disaster. Playing off the success of the Planet of the Apes, this world is filled with humans who have been reduced back to savagery while intelligent, highly evolved animals rule the planet. Commandy also appeared in other publications such as an Elseworld story entitled Commandy at Earth's End, and also a few Superman Batman stories, one of them being a generation story, as well as the Infinite Crisis series. Currently, Commandy is enjoying a 12 issue miniseries entitled The Commandy Challenge. I personally like this figure of Commandy, and I think that it represents Jack Kirby's art in a really kind of cool way. As you can see, the sculpting on this figure is pretty spot on for what Jack Kirby's artwork looked like. From the boots, to the ripped up shorts, the little gun in the belt there, it's pretty much perfect. And I like the fact that they actually did some shading on the skin color, because with the DC Universe Classics, you didn't always get that shading in between the muscles. So I think this is an excellent representation of Commandy, and as a DC fan, I was really, really happy to get him, although it is a little bit sad that I saw so many commandies just sitting on the pegs, warming and warming and warming for eternity. The next character I thought was an interesting choice to be immortalized in action figure form was Vigilante, the Adrian Chase version in particular. He had a sniper rifle and some infrared goggles. He was an expert marksman and a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant. This version of the Vigilante first appeared in 1983 in New Teen Titans Annual No. 2 and was created by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Later he got his own ongoing series from November 1983 to February 1988, totaling 50 issues. The persona of the Vigilante was assumed by DA Adrian Chase as a means to fight crime outside of his jurisdiction. At first his methods were non-lethal, but as his mental health deteriorated, he became a killer. Later, his friend Alan Wells would take up the mantle and become an even more violent vigilante than Chase. Now, if you're a DC Universe Classics fan like I am, you were probably just as surprised as I was to see Vigilante hanging on the pegs in your local Walmart or wherever, because Vigilante is not a very popular character and not a lot of people even know who he was. As a matter of fact, his series wasn't even really that successful back in the 80s. He does strike a cool looking figure. However, he's an underutilized, not very popular character that they decided to make into action figure form and try to sell for 18 bucks a pop. Again, this figure was doomed to sit on the pegs and warm them, holding the place for better figures that never got put out because he was there on the pegs, and a lot of stores refused to put out new stuff until the old stuff sells. Next on our list of DC Universe Classics Obscurities is Buddy Blank, the OMAC, the One Man Army Corps. Created in 1974 by comics legend Jack Kirby, close to the end of his contract with DC after the cancellation of his New God series, OMAC is basically Jack Kirby's version of Captain America set in the future, an idea Kirby toyed with while at Marvel but never realized. OMAC works for the GPA, which stands for Global Peace Agency, a group of faceless people who police the entire world using pacifistic weapons. The original OMAC series lasted only 8 issues, and without proper completion of the storyline, was ended abruptly. OMAC is tied to one of Jack Kirby's other comic character creations, Commandy, in Commandy issue number 50, and is shown to be his grandfather. OMAC's abilities include interfacing with the Brother Eye satellite via an invisible beam to a receiver on his belt. OMAC has access to an array of superhuman abilities based on density control superhuman strength and enhanced durability with increased density and super speed with decreased density, not to mention self-repair and energy generation. Now, OMAC hanging on a peg, obviously parents aren't going to have any idea who he is, judging by his giant mohawk and sideburns, his orange pants, and the eye on his chest. Really, parents are going to have no idea who this character is, and like the first two, again, he was destined to warm the pegs for seemingly forever. Our next character is everyone's favorite red satyrian, Jem, the son of Saturn. Created by Greg Potter and Gene Colan, Jem first appeared in the first issue of a 12-issue maxi-series entitled Jem, the son of Saturn, in 1984. 
Jem is a red Saturian and has his place of origins on the planet Saturn. Jem was originally conceived to be the Martian Manhunter's cousin, but later he had his origins rewritten to avoid any continuity problems. When it came to his series, it was actually revealed that he had absolutely no connection to everybody's favorite Oreo cookie munching Martian, the Manhunter from Mars. Later, he would be reintroduced to the DC Universe by Grant Morrison in JLA No. 12, where Jem and the Martian Manhunter's similarities were emphasized and explained as the Satyrians were a race that were created and modeled upon the Martians. Jem possesses super strength, the power of flight, telepathy, the ability to fire psychokinetic energy discharges from the organic gemstone in his forehead, which is known as the Mark of Jargon. Saturians cannot shapeshift as the Martians can, but they do in fact possess the ability for rapid cellular regeneration. I think this is a striking figure. I love my gem action figure, although I'm fully aware that it's an action figure of a character that again, unless you were reading comics fairly closely in the 1980s, you would have no idea who this character was to begin with. Although I do like the fact that Grant Morrison reutilized this character in a more modern setting. Now, standing back and having a look at all four of these characters, which I've reviewed today, Jem, Commandy, Vigilante, and Omak, some people might say that it's a no-brainer that the DC Universe Classics line died. And that might be true, but whether it's true or not, I think one thing we can all agree on as DC fans is that if it wasn't for the Mattel DC Universe Classics, we never would have gotten these four characters, because even DC Direct never made these characters for us. So, maybe it's something to be thankful about. Anyhow, that's my time for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and subscribe so you never miss a video. And I will see you in the next video. Toodaloo!